is a rate of change. That's what this lesson is all about. So this is, I'm using Desmos here, and you will have access to this Desmos uh, in the description. I'll leave a link um, so that you can open up the Desmos yourself and play with it um, and follow along for yourself. So a rate of change just is a way of describing how a function changes. So I have x squared graphed here, simple graph, the green line is x squared, and I, you see that blue dotted line there. And the blue dotted line is just basically describing how this x squared is changing between, I'm going to actually move that, between negative 1, say, and 2 in terms of the x values. Right? So how does the function change between negative 1 and 2? Well, if you look at the blue line, the function increases between those two points. Right? Um, if I move this here, how does the function change between 1 and 2? Again, the function is increasing between those two points. If I change it to how the function changes between, say, negative 2 and 1, now between these two points, the function is decreasing. Right? So it's just a way of describing how the function changes between those two points. We actually don't really care about what's happening in between. The function looks like it's decreasing here and then increasing again. But on average, the function is decreasing. That's why we call this method of determining how a function changes, we call this the average rate of change between two points. So uh, you'll also notice what happens if I, for example, look at what the, the rate of change is between negative 1 and 1. Well, if I bring this down here, what's going to be the rate of change? See that line is a horizontal line? What's the slope of a horizontal line? And you can actually see over here, you might have noticed this already, this is the slope of this rate of change. It's zero, right? So between negative one and one, the function doesn't really change. Even though we know it actually does, the average rate of change between those two is zero. So again, if you keep your eye on uh, over here, this is the slope between those two points, basically, the slope of that blue dotted line. So this line, this blue dotted line, actually has a special name. It describes the average rate of change, but it has a special name, and that's called the secant. The secant is just the, uh, the line between two points on a, on a function, basically. And we calculate that, the slope of that line, in the same way back to grade 9 even, we would calculate the slope of a line. It's just going to be sort of your y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And if you look on Desmos, how that's actually calculating the slope, in this case right here, it happens to be negative 1, um, that's exactly what it is. Instead of saying y2 minus y1, we say f at x2 minus f at x1, which is basically the same thing as y2 minus y1. So there we go. That's pretty straightforward to calculate, and that's what average rate of change is and how it's calculated. Basically the slope of the line between two points on the graph. Uh, just to, to make it a little bit more complicated here, let's change this from x squared to, let's say, sine x. We know what that graph looks like. Sine x is just that wavy line like that. Um, so again, we can just play with this we know between, say, negative 1 and 1, the graph is increasing on average. Between 0 and 1.5-ish, we know it's actually going to be pi by 4. Um, or sorry, pi by 2. Uh, but that's going to be have a positive slope. Down here, if I increase this here, it's going to have 0 slope. And then here, it's going to have a negative slope. So again, we don't care about the fact that it goes up and then down. For our average rate of change, we just care about the slope of the secant between those two points. Okay? So there we go. That's what uh, average rate of change and secant looks like for a sine curve. You can plug in actually here whatever function you want and see how that works for that function. There is another way now, a second way, to find the rate of change of a function. And it's not the average rate of change, so actually I'm going to turn off the secant for a second, and it's called the instantaneous rate of change. I'm going to turn on this button that says tangent, and all that is, instead of looking at what the rate of change is between two points, what's the slope of the function at that point right there? So this is at that instant, at that point, what is the slope of the function? If you're having a hard time visualizing this, uh, think about it like this. If I zoomed in on the function, enough on the green function there. See how the green, if I remove the tangent for a second, uh, see how the green line just looks like a line when you zoom in enough? What's the slope of that line where you have it super zoomed in? And again, this is called the instantaneous rate of change. 
and that line is called the tangent line, okay? For the instantaneous rate of change, it's basically the line that just touches the graph at that one point. It has the same slope of the graph at, one, at that one point. So for example, for this sine curve, at an x value of one, the slope of the tangent at that point is 0.54-ish, right? And we can see that. If we go up here to the top, we can see that the slope of the function at that point, you should notice it's right around zero, it's very close to zero. And then if we look at the slope of the function over here at say three, you'll notice the slope is negative. The way I like to visualize instantaneous rate of change, um, if, it's, if it's a little bit confusing for you, is I like to picture like a little snowboarder or a skateboarder riding on this curve. What direction would that snowboarder skateboard be pointing? Right? Say you had like a laser pointer stuck on that snowboard, which, which way would it be pointing? Okay? Um, and this, this can help us visualize it here as well. Just to have one more example, I'm going to change this to an exponential graph. So let's do 2 to the power of x. Okay? So we know now the green line is an exponential, which looks like that. It's always increasing. And we can see our instantaneous rate of change there. It's positive. And if we look, say, at a value of 2, an x value of 2, we're going to have a rate of change of 2.8-ish. So that's what the slope of the tangent is at that point. So just to review very quickly, we have two different ways to measure rate of change of a function. Ooh, that blue point is way up there. We have the blue line here, which is the tangent line, or sorry, the, the secant line, right? The slope between two points. Um, and we can calculate that pretty easily using this formula here, right? Basically y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Or we can have the slope of the tangent, which is the slope at one point, And we call this the instantaneous rate of change of that function. Now, you might be asking, how can we actually calculate the instantaneous rate of change? I don't really have a formula here. The formula is all buried in this, in this folder here. Um, so feel free to open that up and check it out for yourself. But the, the point is it's a little bit more complicated to calculate the slope of the tangent. And we will be taking care of that in a future lesson.